Okay, I see some of the familiar faces I think we met in the previous conferences. Uh, again, my name is Manoj Jain, uh, I work for Make My Trick. And in today's session, we are going to share our journey about agile implementation, that how we started, what are the challenges we faced, and uh, what are the various approaches that we followed. This uh, quick about myself. So how many of us are in the beginning process for agile implementation? Okay, and how many of us are from the e-commerce background? Okay, maybe like 10, 20 percent. Good, so what we are going to share that how it is different, uh, you know, from the enterprises which have 12 months, 18 months cycle and they transform to agile methodology versus an organization who which is in e-commerce, very rapid paced environment, and then you introduce agile or you want to follow what kind of various challenges that you may follow. Both the perspective, at least to uh, myself, are different, and I'll share that how I, what, why I feel that they are different. Okay, uh, as you, in the interest of time, I've been advised that to take up the question as large. Uh, so, but what we'll do, I'll try to, you know, keep it as prepared as possible. But if you have any question that you want to get clarified, just raise your hand, we'll see if it is in the interest time, we could clarify. I just have 147 slides, so we should be able to make it. <laughs> okay, so everybody is with me. Cool. Okay. So I don't have any SLA then to finish all this slide. The idea is that, you know, we can exchange it, the information and, uh, you know, have discussion on various aspects of agile implementation. So this is going to be agenda for uh, this session. I'll cover a little about Make My Trip. I'm sure one of the other point you would have used the services provided by Make My Trip. So probably a little insight to what happens behind the scene. Uh, you know, that may be of interest to some of you. Uh, it's an OTA, which is called an online travel agency, uh, started in 2000, India operation started in 2005, a uh, little more statistics about Make My Trip. Uh, we provide flights, hotel, holidays, FPH, rail, bus, these are the services we provide. And in terms of the complexity, none of the inventory is with us. If we need to book a flight, we need to go to respective uh, airline, book it, you know, so on for buses, inventory. So, it's all real time. You have the security aspect, performance aspect, usability aspect, you know, multiple device factors, and all those things. So, in terms of the complexity, there are a lot many. And uh, the beauty as well as challenge is that you know you provide it for free most of the cases, right? And you have a lot of competitors, both from the original airlines, they have direct services, hotels, they have direct website. And how do you build that USP that people still come to you and then buy from you? So in terms of, uh, do we have USB stick? No? Okay, no worries. So from the e-commerce, just understanding the part, uh, when, so I'll just share like uh, people who are from the uh, e-commerce background would understand that or at least from the web uh, pages. So if you visit a site for the very first time, that's called a unique visit. When you visit subsequent time, then it is called a visit, it is no more a visit. A unique visit. Oh. Good. Thank you. So uh, it's a visit, and then in w one visit, how many pages you view becomes your pages uh, page views. So depending on the structure of the site, you may visit a couple of pages, four, or five pages, ten pages. That's how the structure is. But by and large, the more number of pages you view indicates that how engaged you are. You know, just barring the factor that maybe it is bad structure that you need to look for so many pages before you can find what you are looking for. Uh, and then, you know, that tells that what is the volume coming, how many users are coming in. And it is very important that there are various that ways that user may approach your site. So there are direct traffic when somebody goes to the you know browser and then say make my trip.com, that's a direct traffic. When somebody goes to Google and then say make my trip, it shows the results. And then when you go from there, it's the SEO traffic, right? Because pages are indexed. You visit some site and you see a make my trip banner because it's the paid marketing. That is the search engine marketing, SEM. Then we pay to those advertisers and then 
get the traffic. So the more traffic we have, which is direct and from the SEO, it's good for the organization. It has to be a larger chunk. Most of the companies which come into market, you know, invest heavily on the paid marketing because that's the only way they can acquire traffic. So, little about the context, you know, uh, we started the journey one year back in April 2014, but why we should start, you know, company has been performing, the deliveries are going out, you know, revenue is going up, why do we want to change it? Uh, to my understanding, it was a very rapid pace and moving environment, you know, releases are going very fast, but then what is that we want to achieve? So, one byproduct of moving fast is that at times you may cut corners, at times you may not be very efficient in uh, choosing the path, you know, what you are doing actually. And that's what I realized. So, though I've been working with Make My for like close to now three years, one year ago we started that let's move on with this journey. This could be helpful. So, some of the context that what brought or what added to the complexity I'm going to share here. So, in terms of uh, servers, any guesses how many servers we may have? Server, I I'm, don't mean physical server, but it could be a virtual server also, but server is server. There is no penalty for wrong answer. Hundred. Hundred. Thousand. Thousands. Thousands. What else? Yeah, so we have little over uh, thousand servers located across two data centers. You know, they are, we have active, active data centers. It's not that the uh, disasters have a backup site. So the bookings were equally at the both the data centers. Any idea about number of fixes going into production per week? Per week, yeah. Maybe 10, 20? It's 100 as of now. 100 changes going into production per week. Uh, have you heard of multivariate testing? A-B testing, right? So. Uh, if one gentleman opens a site, make my trip now, he may see a different version versus the somebody else opens. So we do a lot of testing going in parallel that, let's say you are introducing a new banner, you are introducing a new widget, and you want to see that how it is performing to the current number, then you show it to different people, you know, and then see how they have been scaling. One way is that you can say, Monday I'm going to run one version and second version on second day, but there's a lot of dynamics in the market. It's not an apple to apple comparison. It has to be available at the same time, uh, same set of audience, so that you can get the realistic uh, results and then you can count upon them. So at any given point of time, we have numbers of uh, ABs are going on to check that how the new developments are working in the production environment and how customers are responding to them. Uh, so that makes it a little difficult from QA standpoint because the same code is there, configurations are changed, there are a lot of if conditions, there are a lot of, you know, Externalization of the uh, the traffic or the the AB logic that is outside it, and then you need to make sure that it is working fine, right? And when the traffic is coming in, how it is getting divided in proportion uh, has to be right. Otherwise, it may you know screw up your result. Uh, we have two data centers, as I mentioned, uh, located in India. I work in an active active fashion. Uh, we have about 350 engineers in technology, we are working supporting the various parts of the business. And last but not the least, competitors. You know. uh, in our industry, uh, first mover advantage plays an important role. If somebody is introducing a new feature, you know, customers go to it. You would have seen like earlier the reward points, now these days the wallets, you know, you can store a wallet and then you say 30% discount because that's a way of acquiring customers and as well as retaining them. So that makes very important that anything we are doing, it has to be really fast, but have to be thought through also. So even your technical solution may be supporting this 100 changes. CMS solution may be. CMS. solution may not work 100. So CMS we are using for the SEO, we use Drupal for that purpose. Uh, but that's only restrict to the SEO part. Uh, for the front-end development, it's like a multi text tech environment. We have front-end in PHP, back-end. Uh, mid office part is dot and technology the funnels and the all the layers are in the java tech stack so uh, for the nvidia test and target so you got separate testing or uh, same team same team same team and again we use some marketing tool also like adopt test and target is one uh, we use that also
but that is only for the banners part. But if it is a part of the the page, yeah. but then it is iframes or different uh, different things that we use and then show it according to the A/B template. Do you bring it into your uh, normal panel of uh, deliverables or it's a separate? No, it's a normal panel. Okay. So it becomes a spec for the QA team or the development. Right. So a uh, little about our journey. So. You know, just imagine one scenario. Somebody is walking slow or walking at its, its pace, and then you ask that person go a little go more fast. Is it difficult or easy to make somebody move fast? It depends how fast you are By and large, if you say majority, right? It would be a little difficult because you, the person has to come out of their comfort zone. Or even may not be saying fast, but changing some of the modus of Randy, the way he is walking and the way he is. On the other hand, if somebody is going really fast and you say that go slow down, are you walking in the right direction or no? Or running in the right direction or no? Take this path. Is it further difficult or easy? Harder. It's further harder, right? So that's the challenge we faced. So there is a PMO team who are responsible for the PNNL. There is a technology team who works on the requirements given by them. And until this was uh, introduced, PMs were like the king or the you know the master. So they come in and say, okay, I want to the development team to work on this uh, development, work on this, deliver it. And now suddenly they realize, oh, something is more important than this. I need to work on this, or I committed for this, let's deliver it. Stop that work, work on this. And somebody walks in, you know, and says, oh, we are introducing Agile. What does it mean? You need to give requirement, two weeks, no change, unless it is really, you know, business critical. They say, looks like somebody is coming on my way. Somebody is taking my empowerment, right? Somebody is saying that you can't go to talk to the team that often and make the changes. So it's not easy. The acceptance would be really low, right? Unless people understand the value in it, because eventually, if Everything is getting delivered at the end of the sprint. What was planned, it is good for them. They can meet their target. They are more, more confident about what is going to be delivered. But it looks easy in theory, but it's really difficult. So how do you socialize? How do you see value in it that what is their advantage uh, is very important? So what we thought that, you know, understanding the business context and convincing of agile would really help, not sake of implementing it. Many times you would have, uh, hear this, you know, client comment saying, okay, just because everybody is following, we should follow it, it looks cool, it makes our customer happy, you know, not that way. Because if people are not convinced about it, they are not going to put their best of effort. Be it an engineer or a manager or a product manager, or even for that management. They should see value in it. So it is very important that like what are the problem statement we are going to solve and how it is going to help our organization. Uh, that's the analysis we did and uh, move ahead. Not just a process change, it's a mindset change as I mentioned, right? It's not that difficult as like Tadagat was also mentioning, it's not an end goal, it's a journey, it's a way of achieving there. And people has to be people have to be open about it that so if you have any shortcoming or you have any strengths they are going to surface very quickly via following Agile. Right. It will not solve if there is a, uh, you know, in the CXO level, there is a person who does not do planning and then always does a mandate that deliver so and so. Agile is not going to solve. But Agile, Agile is going to tell you that something went wrong. Somebody changed the gear which wasn't expected. You have to solve those problems. Many times I've seen that every problem in the organization, be it the soft skills of the pro people, be it the any other, you know, two people are not talking to each other, they want to solve via Agile, which is not correct. Right? So, uh, having a champion at management would help because you would require any kind of support, either processes change, some budget. So, you should find that somebody who understands that what we are trying to do supports and uh, provides the required support at different levels. Identify and understand supporters, neutrals, and non-supporters. You would have all kind of people in the organization. So see them who they are and work accordingly. You can't have a big bang approach. Uh, you have to go take the baby steps, uh, lean towards people who want to try it out, give you some uh, opportunity, try with them. Then the people who are neutral would see that where the wave is going, they will incline accordingly. And they will slowly uh, come at your side. And the people who are non-supporters, probably there would be some genuine reason why they don't want to support. 
maybe they have some commitments or some deliveries they are worried whether after changing this gear am I going to make it or no. So maybe one on ones would help. Aspirations may not help, but I think one on ones what is their apprehension, what they think that is the weak point would help. Yeah, as I mentioned, uh, avoid big bang and uh, take baby steps. Be sensitive about the learning curve of audience, right? Uh, I'm sure the organization will go in a mandate mode that by fiscal, end of fiscal, FY16, we need to implement agile, we have to be there. So somebody would own that KRA and would do all left, right, center to make that possible. But you know, it is your KRA, not the engineer's KRA or not the other audience KRA. Be sensitive about the, what is stopping them, how you can overcome them. Uh, so that will give you more support rather than just doing a checklist or ceremonial thing. Just curious to know when you say that people will have KRA to implement Agile by a, a day, is this the case in your study or I mean, is there an end point to say that now your Agile stop? No, no. So when we started, the vision was that, okay, can we get Agile by end of fiscal, let's say 15, by you know, 31st March. What does it mean? In it practice? means that people are following all the practices. You know, you have the, all these print ceremonies are going on, people are maintaining the backlog. Otherwise, usually people are maintaining their backlog at Excel sheet, PowerPoints, emails, whatever the forms they are. Can we unify them? The idea was that everybody following the same ceremonies, doing all the activities in the similar fashion. Yeah, that's the more important part. So that's what is it, let's not touch a target. Let's do in the fashion that team realizes the value, you know? And that worked for us because, you know, there were about 20% people who said that, okay, we are open for it, let's try it out. I, you know, volunteer my team that we want to practice it. And that's how it worked with us. So still now also we are on this journey. It's not that we have fully implemented it, but the teams who have on board are really feeling value in it. Started your journey, you must have some objective to go for it. So what was your objective or goal for going for it? Okay, excellent point. So we had a lot of rework, right? Uh, when the PMs were giving this requirement, so the, it was a burn at the either side, PM side as well as the tech side. So PMs were saying that I have this backlog of requirement which is not going live. Tech is saying that you know I have my engineers are working day and night, and, but the releases are not going to production. There are always gear changing my effective productivity is going down. People are leaving organization because there is no direction. So that was one point. Um, so that is the area which has helped us a lot. The other point was that the specs were, specs are now much better. Initially it was like somebody realized I need to get this to Allah, he's just writing a couple of lines or just explaining to the dev or QA, which is not thought through and posing a lot of challenge. Now I'll just share, so what we did that, you know, we set something called the product backlog and scheduling meeting. So if my sprint is starting two weeks down the line, I should have high level requirements in this week, which I want to get done. And by end of, mid of next week, Wednesday, they should be freezed. So that Monday team can start their journey. So it also posed a challenge to the PMs. Initially there was a lot of pushback. They were not ready to do it, but now it has become the momentum. Right, so there are a lot many things that you know team is able to churn within the same amount of time. What are the life cycle you are following here? No, it's not life cycle. So you may say that it's like ad hoc or the uh, you know I won't call it as a waterfall also, but just you know you have a bunch of PMs and there's a tech team that pick over a requirement, they give it to them, entire herd is working on that, and then suddenly change the gear. I'm not sure if there is a terminology for that, but that was the thing. And it worked. Actually, the point is that you know, companies still made money. The projects were delivered. It's about that, you know, how much you can churn with a given set of people. What's the quality you can churn? And in case of listen, go beyond what you see and what you listen. You know, people won't narrate that why they don't want to support. It's like an infant who is crying. The infant won't tell you that why he is crying, or, you know, so you go beyond what you see and go beyond what you listen, so that there is some problem we need to identify. Our tolerance of failures, focus on winning wars and the battles. So you are saying that, you know, this team is ready, they can start doing it, but they are still not doing it. And the manager says, I need three more months because I need to deliver this. And then you are in a 
you know, dilemma whether should we give this time or no. If you see that you can provide this time, just honor their time, but hold them accountable for their commitment that after three months they are going to start on it. So it's like a win-win thing. So you lost that small battle of not starting at that point of time, but you have a greater probability of winning that war. Keep everyone updated of progress being made, including the management. Just what are the various things you have introduced, how people are uh, seeing the value. You can do the surveys from the engineers, from the PM, and then find out who, how they are finding value. So from our side, PMs, after it was introduced, the respective PMs said that they are more confident about that a certain deliverable will go in production. Initially, they had always apprehension that 11th hour, somebody would walk in and say, I got this bug, it cannot go live. Or you said me this. There was a sudden issue which came in and my engineer started working on it. Due to that, it won't go live. So there were a lot of apprehensions. So that has gone down. The quality of deliverables have gone up. Now there are very less scenarios which were not which were not discovered during the design and development only. You know, otherwise, you send a product live and then you realize, oh, I missed one use case which could have been covered earlier. So approach, uh, just a similar summary. Uh, Starting in 2014, we got support. Our CTO was very you know, supportive of uh, implementing Agile and providing required resources. We made infrastructure availability. It is very important. Distribution list, collaboration side tools, and training. We were using Microsoft SharePoint as a collaboration tool. There are Altisha and there are many other wikis, whatever you are using. But provide one step solution to the team that they can find it out. And it should not be a long URL that somebody has to earmark or bookmark in their browser. It has to be simple as that, you know, agile.mmt.com or avc.com. Otherwise, people won't remember them and uh, you just give up on accessing their site. Imparting training to key members for all the basic hygiene. So we did a lot of small sessions to make sure that everybody understand that, including the PMs. Otherwise, you're uh, speaking in one language which people are not understanding doesn't make sense. So we provided like two hours session of each team to run them through the basics of Agile and they can appreciate that what we are talking about. Starting with DSM, so this was an important point. We did not want to go in again a big bang approach within a team also. We said that if you are not sure about how to do the sprint planning, you don't have a backlog, don't worry about it. You just start the DSM. You don't need to do any homework for it. It's just a 15 minutes meeting, start with it, start seeing value in it. When they got flavor of it, they were ready for, to go to the next step where they said, okay, let's do the sprint planning part. And, and you see that on our floor, there are like a uh, lot many teams are there. You see that, you know, when we started this journey, there is a one team standing, you know, just doing the DSM. And now between 10 to 11 at our floor, you know, almost everybody is standing. And it becomes at times challenging because they are talking to each other, they are overhearing each other's update. But that's help, that has helped us. You know. uh, and then there are some team who are doing planning better now, going to a stage of doing the better retrospectives and better reviews. And your team is all co-located. That's correct. That's the advantage we got. There is one technology team at Gurgaon office itself, so it provided a lot of uh, merits to us. Uh, starting with units who are supporters of Agile, uh, so there are people who have worked in their class assignments on Agile, they were very supportive, so we started with them and uh, it was like a charm for us. Uh, for letters, various uh, emails, posters we keep sending uh, to the individuals. I'll show you some of the examples later in this slide. And then once we reach to a stage where people are talk, started talking about it, it becomes a terminology in the regular discussion. We thought now it is a time let's elevate the bar. So there were 10 people who were certified, who went for training for CSM training. Uh, we have like Pooja sitting here from Ajivita, she was coordinating that point of time. So Madhu provided, uh, conducted that training for us on the CSM part. And then it was technology. So mainly these people were playing scrum master role. And they were all from the technology. Now it is one side of the story covered. Then you realize that, OK, now what about PMs? They should also understand the same language, same seriousness. And the bunch of people who were excited about it, they went through the CSP training. So in, at the end, we had one person from the tech and one person from the PM who have attended CSM and CSP respectively. So these are two key roles. 
and they became the train the trainer approach and guiding other team members in their law line of business. So that has worked uh, well for us. One on ones with the key stakeholder and see feedback how they are feeling. At times people would say I don't find any difference. You know, it just looks same. Okay, that's also a feedback, and then you go back and check why they feel so, where things are not going right. Educate teams and avoid push mode, uh, that I shared earlier. Strengthen key automation. This would always put agile adoption on critical path. You know, people would say that, oh, this is delivered, this is pending QA, QA is still doing uh, functional QA. So if the automation is missing, I think it will be just a theory part. So very important that we alleviate the level of QA in the organization. Uh, if you're starting a journey, there would be people who are just pure manual testers, right? There would be some people who are excited to move to automation. There are people who will be in their comfort zone. So you need to see that, how do I bring a culture that if I'm hiring a new QA engineer, I won't hire any manual tester. So that elevates the bar of the organization. And the people who are there on the floor uh, already, we provide them training. And if they can pop up, well and good. If not, uh, we need to you know, have different discussions. So, but give them sufficient time so that they can come. CI CD, so a lot of focus is there. We are using Jenkins for the uh, CI part. And uh, you know, so this is really helping. So without that, it will be just uh, you know hunting in dark or just keeping your finger crossed, hoping that everything works, which is not going to work. So these are the key two areas, CICD and the, the automation, which will give a lot of confidence, not only the, the QA team, but the overall delivery team that what they are doing is going in the right direction. And doing. answer in two parts. Uh, so one is that from the manual test cases perspective, so when developers are uh, developing their code, the QA are writing their test cases from the manual side and then providing to the development so that they can run it and there are no showstoppers or they, they are all green by the time it is really good, which is a traditional model. Now while the developers are doing their coding, the healthy developers, uh, the testers are writing their test scripts. Right. If it, even if it is a new UI development, you need to have the object IDs, page objects that you can use them. While they are writing their code, they can share you the IDs. So you can build your page object library. You can build your uh, methods, abstract method, which consumes those uh, you know IDs. And then the test scripts are there. So assuming that you know things fall in place, they are going to pass unless uh, they will build. Right. So it's very important that they push, give that push hard and reach to that stage. Another thing, important thing is that connect the dots via CI. Otherwise, you'll say, OK, I have this test cases. I have this test script, which is used by different Jenkins installation. Developers are using different uh, repository, maybe Git or SVN, and they have different Jenkins installation, which is not a common thread. So try them together. Otherwise, it will be like part of story. You can't see the entire thing. The other important call, another thing which may pose a challenge is that you know, everybody, so we see that there is a lot of challenge on ground in terms of automation. And then everybody says KRA for uh, engineers saying that you need to automate this much script, right? Whatever velocity, 5, 6, 7 per day, or per quarter, whatever you said. And they just chase against it, right? Because that's their KRA. And they, you know, if they met it, they have met it. At the end of the, you know, review period, they'll say, oh, I have automated this many cases. But still the confidence is not there. Still, somebody wants to go and manually verify if the use cases are working fine. So don't make test cases as your <coughs> criteria for automation. It's the code coverage. So if I'm writing additional lines of code or writing test, my code coverage, whether it is class coverage, block coverage, method coverage, is not going up. You're getting stuck in the same area. Right? So the challenge uh, I'm facing here is, uh, mine is a product-based company. Okay. And we already have a product now. So we want to go for the CI CD, okay. And the thing is now we have we, we have to write the test cases for the entire product that has been developed. Not necessarily. So 
not necessarily my view is that you start from what is the new code getting written. See, there are two parts. Initially, you need to put a lot of effort in terms of building that framework because then it is just a test case addition. So what you said is any new any new development which I do, it will be automated and then have some plan in place that how I can cover on the regression ground. My question is on the CI/CD front especially. So make my trip would have a product before they went agile, right? That's correct. Before they implemented CI/CD to a certain maturity. That's what correct. I understand is CI/CD is an ongoing process and you have to mature it. Okay. So when you started to uh, thinking that okay we want to achieve CI/CD at, uh, at a certain extent, okay, the code that was already written, have did you manage to write n units or j units for all? No, that code that was no, there. No, no. Okay. So we started with that where we said that this is a cutoff. After that, we need to have the uh, J unit test cases, or we need to have the continuous integration. From then point onward, you start writing it. Right? Yeah. So then, when uh, then uh, when you make a build, automation build. Okay. Uh, when we are making a auto automated build, it needs to check certain kind of test cases. So then, on, only on those test cases, you would check. And so the manual is still going on. See, no, I'm, I'm talking about uh, continuous integration over there. So Correct. When the when the continuous integration is there, so when you are making a build, okay, quick build is there. So whatever the test cases we have, J units we have written. After that, only they then they will test only. They'll. That that's part. correct. That's correct. So what is the strategy to cover the rest of the code? So what we are doing that any new members are coming in, we are asking them to give this part of the which was the existing code and write basic case that at least the classes are covered and then move further on that. But don't stop yourself that if I can't cover the existing one, I I may not be able to start on a new one. Uh, that is that is fine. So, so you can have a cover the previous one because uh, what I got uh, was that without uh, if you don't have a good code coverage, okay, there is no point uh, for continuous integration. Uh, not necessarily, not necessarily. See, the purpose of integration is that there are multiple developers writing code on daily basis, right? They are having their developer branch. And then when they check in into the repository, that should get integrated, that they are not conflict, right? You can do a manual merge or you can do auto uplifting of the code. So that is the point. Otherwise, you you know spend a lot of time in merging their code. So that's the first step. Now it may have regression impact on the one or the other side. So that is the automation in place that you can hear the J unit from the developer side or you have the functional test from the automation side. But this integration should go on a daily basis so that nobody is leaving their code in their machine which may crash and it is getting integrated daily to the main branch, integration branch. Actually, if you are uh, doing feature-driven development, right? Uh, that said, there is one because of multiple scrum team working on the That's same there. Thing. That's there. No, I'm saying in that way also, CI is uh, very important. Yeah. That's right. I think so, CI can make uh, okay. one purpose for CI is also like when somebody is checking in their code, that time uh, I, the, uh, the code is fine. It's not the breaking and the Yeah. And then you can do static code analysis, you can do various kinds of other instrumentation code coverage, ECLM and stuff like that. So there are a lot many merits in it. Uh, so yeah, code coverage part is important while you do the automation, just don't focus on the, maybe I'll cover this slide, so I'll take your question. Okay. Uh, so that is going to be important part. And the journey is still on, uh, like a lot many improvements we are doing. Uh, to make it for the better. So these are the, some of the things. So we got this created Scrum cheat sheet. Uh, you know, it's an A4 size paper. We distributed to the entire audience on their desk. And when people have uh, doubt in their mind, uh, they could refer to these cheat sheets. They were really helpful. One thing which helped for us was that usually in a fast-paced moving environment, people say, "How about handling?" So you ask me to do a sprint planning for two weeks. I did that. Now there is an ad hoc issue comes which is business critical. How do I handle it? And many a times people say that there are a lot many ad hoc things due to which I cannot come in for my sprint. Do we face that problem? Yes. yes. Correct. And then one thing we do is that people say, okay, let's consider 20% effort for the ad hoc activities, everybody. If there are 20 developers, 20 team members, 20% becomes 4% right, effort for a sprint. And still you face that 
you know, we have lot many distractions. People are not able to do it because if an email comes, it was sent to a DL, everybody is reading it, thinking somebody else would pick up or there will be doubts, right? Because no one knows the entire module. Still, it was counterproductive. So what we tried out, we said, okay, let's carve out a team of two or three people. They are only for ad hoc activities. Every student will interchange them. So everybody gets flavor of what does it mean. So nobody is feeling neglected that I am working an uh, ad hoc activity job. And interestingly, those two people could do job of which was not, could not be done by 20% effort. Right? Agile does not prescribe that, but it was your situation and how you face it, so you could take it out. We still have uh, improvement area in that side, but it helped us a lot. At least those 16, 17 people can focus on their uh, uh, plan work that they plan for sprint. So for a cheat sheet, it was a poster, uh, SharePoint site, which is having all the you know required collaterals. Uh, usually we are using one of the SAS based tool uh, for which is primarily for the project management. Three years ago or three and a half years ago it was procured. Uh, we tried to do agile ceremonies with it. It was really falling short of expectation. And when we found that it could not go further, then we switched to Jira. Uh, so you know if you don't have right tool, at times it becomes a uh, bottleneck in your implementation. People would start getting confused what is agile versus they question the tool. Right, so. so after QA it is staggered release, impediments and uh, done. We we have like last hour we don't go in a big bang release. We deploy in a couple of servers and five server, ten servers so that everything is working fine. Yeah? So we have to mostly two big sprints. Yeah. I was just curious to know if your teams are using visual management for their daily activities or they are still relying on tools like Jira? Jira. So every backlog, the tasks and everything is in Jira now. Is there a reason not to do it through just visual? Visual, sorry? Like, you know, having the visual board and simulating the same behavior and... On the post and stuff? Yeah. No, so the Jira is in a prominent location, so this task board, you know, somebody may go creative and then say, okay, I'm projecting on a wall with a projector or have a large monitor. If you have infrastructure, is that probably that's the best thing. Uh, the biggest advantage is that if there are DSM happening, if I'm saying I'm developing this code, but my story is still in the to-do list because uh, we still do estimation on hours and uh, days, and we took this call uh, knowingly. It is something where if I say this USB stick is $17, each one of us may multiply with 60 rupees and then say and then say it is cheap or expensive. Similarly, people are you know on a learning for agile, why to confuse with another dimension? So let them comfort get comfortable with it and then we'll move to the story point. I know there are a lot of apprehension about this estimation technique, you know, before people get comfortable in doing this. Improve burn down charge. And support functions adapting Kanban. You know, there are uh, support function. Uh, that's the thing that uh, we can do. Okay, that's all. Is it on time? You still have five minutes. Okay, good. I will just comment. Your 147 slides complete. Oh, 147 are done. So uh, you had Scrum of Scrum, right? So how are you integrating into the problem of Scrum and for multiple teams dealing together? So. So per se we don't have scrum of scrum. So what we have individual vertical unit which we call as a line of business. These line of business are like 10 to 12 member teams and then having their scrum. If there is a project which cut across multiple teams, so these people on a need basis meet, maybe usually they have a weekly meeting, come over and discuss that how is the progress happening for their respective function for this project. So may not be calling Scrum of Scrum from that program, but it's a project will be meeting that the all the dependent teams are progressing well. And that was for a, a ceremonial daily basis or weekly basis? Usually these are kind of, if there's a project which you know cuts up from multiple lines of business, then they are meeting on a weekly basis. Any other question? Yeah. Uh, like uh, let's suppose that uh, 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 the situation is like you have 
to earn support from the support groups, be it HR, be it from the infrastructure perspective. So, uh, like uh, for any idle server implementation, it takes at least uh, four weeks and all, and all such cases. So, like license government and all. So, uh, how, were, how were you doing all those things? Uh, uh, okay, that's an excellent question. Uh, from that perspective, we have not much delved into it. So if our infra team says that if you are requesting for a server, it is going to take, let's say, two weeks. So we give them the two weeks heads up, uh, stating that we have a sprint which will require the servers at the end of the sprint. And uh, this is your heads up. Uh, probably that's the area, as I mentioned, Kanman part, that how they can further improve their SLA and then provide things on a shorter basis. But as of now, the focus is product dev and QA that these deliveries should happen with a predictable time. Yeah, but, uh, uh, but uh, the, the PMO organization, the PMO organization always says that, okay, uh, you, you have to get this, uh, this, this set of compliances, and uh, for, uh, for this, uh, uh, you have to follow certain procedures. Project per se. We have only stories. So there is already a product, the announcement are going in, so these are stories. When you're planning for a story that should go in production uh, two weeks or three weeks down the line, you see that if there is any dependency, be it not the only the infra part, you have the UX team, HTML team, you have the security team, performance team, which does this analysis. What are their SLAs or the what are their heads up in terms of by when you give them product and they can churn up? So we respect their timelines and then provide them the heads up. If it is something comes at a short notice, 11th hour, and you feel that it has to be squeezed in current spring, then you got to talk to them and if they can accommodate it. If they can, then uh, we part, we take up that story, otherwise get close to the subsequent The rest of the questions we can take offline. So we have fully okay. available. Sure. And Twitter is available. <laughs> so okay. Thank you all. Thanks, Manoj. Uh, I request you to uh, present uh, Manoj a small momentum in every Thank you.